The top stories tonight in Y News. President Rodrigo Duterte has started to say his goodbyes and has conveyed his gratitude to his cabinet members a month before stepping down from the presidency. Government agencies urge the House of Representatives to pass a bill institutionalizing the interagency subtask group on economic intelligence to go after smugglers. The Department of Health is awaiting the recommendation of the World Health Organization on the use of Moderna COVID-19 vaccines for children ages 6 to 11 years old. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is investigating a potential leak between hepatitis A outbreak and fresh organic strawberries. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, the 31st of May 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts. First in the news, President Rodrigo Duterte held his last full cabinet meeting under his administration. He also expressed gratitude to his cabinet members for a job well done in the past six years. Rosalie Cos reports why. President Rodrigo Duterte presides over his 54th cabinet meeting in Malacanang last night, the first in two years' time and the last before he formally steps down from the office at noontime of June 30, 2022. Acting Cabinet Secretary Melvin Matibag said cabinet clusters reported their accomplishments for the last six years and also mentioned about the things which can be endorsed to the next administration. It's the last cabinet meeting of the Duterte administration, yung full cabinet meeting. But it doesn't mean that we will be stopped working after that. Uh, may mga bilin pa rin, may mga directives pa rin ng Presidente. Siyempre, kung kinakailangan na magkaroon pa ng cabinet meeting in the next 30 days, gagawin naman natin yun. The chief executive also hosted a Thanksgiving dinner in Malacanang for his cabinet and their spouses where he also rendered some songs for them. Masaya, no? Yung uh, upbeat siya. In, in fact, he was uh, gracious enough to render some songs para sa mga member ng gabinete. And uh, it's, it's like a family na eh, parang se celebrating also the, the victory of the administration, yung mga nagawa ng administration. And uh, nagpasalamat sa mga member ng gabinete na, na, na dating member at uh, kasalukayang membro. According to Malacanang, this does not mean that the administration will stop working because President Duterte still has one month left in his term to run the country. Communications Secretary and Acting Presidential Spokesman Martin Andanar said it is still unsure if the president will still conduct his regular Talk to the People address in the weeks ahead. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, government officials under the Marcos administration are now planning to institutionalize reforms in their respective agencies. Incoming DSWD Secretary Erwin Tulfo plans to digitize the aid distribution, while incoming DOT Secretary Frasco vows to revitalize tourism in the country. Janice Ingente will tell us why. To fast track the subsidy distribution during crises such as pandemic and calamities, incoming Department of Social Welfare and Development Secretary Erwin Tufo plans to digitize the subsidy distribution. In this way, subsidies will also be distributed fairly to qualified beneficiaries. Tulfo said this was the first marching order given to him by President-elect Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. 
may mga marching orders siya pre previously kahit nung campaign pa lang pero ito ho talaga galing kani kanina lang ha? gusto niya i-digitalize ang pagbibigay ng ayuda sa DSWD para mas mabilis and at the same time linisin ang listahan ng DSWD yung mga hindi na kinakailangan na nandyan dapat alisin na at dapat i-compare ko yung listahan sa listahan ng LGU particular sa barangay kung sino talaga ang nangangailangan ng ayuda para hindi hindi masayang. Yung mga hindi nabibigyan, mabibigyan na ngayon. He also said that one of Marcos' instructions for the DSWD is to generate jobs for Filipinos who have lost their livelihood due to the pandemic. Tulfo said that he will continue the Malasakit Center program which was first initiated by Senator Bongo. He also plans to retain some DSWD personnel who are eligible for promotion. We need people, ma'am, siguro na nasa babalang na hindi nabigyan ng opportunity na itaaso natin, iakyat natin because sila po, ma'am, ang nakakaalam sa mga problema noon pa, ma'am. Alam na ho nila, kailangan lang ho sila marinig siguro, iakyat ho sila, ilagay ho sila dyan sa USET, uh, ASET, Director, uh, nakapalibot po sa OSET para po mabigyan tayo ng advice kung ano ho mga dapat gawin. Meanwhile, Iluan Cebu Mayor Cristina Prasco vowed to extend her support to the Marcos administration in revitalizing Philippine tourism. In a statement, Prasco said that she will support programs that will revive the tourism industry, which may significantly propel the Philippines' post-pandemic economic growth. Frasco said she has seen firsthand the positive impact of effective tourism governance in the revival of the tourism industry. The official is also aware of the importance of good coordination with local governments, private sector, and other stakeholders to strengthen tourism in the country. She also promised to create more jobs and develop effective policies under her leadership in the department. Janice Enhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippine Food and Drug Administration granted an amendment to the emergency use authorization of Moderna COVID-19 vaccines, allowing its use as a primary series vaccine for Filipino children ages 6 to 11. The Department of Health, meanwhile, is awaiting the recommendation of the World Health Organization. Aiko Miguel reports why. The Health Department confirms that Food and Drug Administration approved the use of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine for children aged 6 to 11 two weeks ago. DOH Director of the Health Promotion Bureau and Disease Prevention and Control Bureau Dr. Beverly Ho explained that after FDA's approval, the Health Technology Assessment Council or HTAC will make a positive recommendation based on either completed Phase 3 and 4 clinical trial or preliminary data from Phase 3 clinical trials and WHO recommendations. DOH and HTAC will await for the WHO's recommendation. Should they find evidence to support a positive recommendation, the DOH National Vaccination Operations Center or NVOC will then roll out the vaccination. Agad ang kikilos na po ang ating EHTAC pagkatapos ay ang ating NVOC at mga LGUs naman para maiparating agad ito sa mga tao. Pero no, ngayon may available na vaccines pa rin tayo for our 5 to 11 years old. Habang inaantay nating mangyari ito, ay nariyan pa rin ang ligtas at mabisang bakuna para sa bata tulad ng Pfizer. Based on the statement of the Philippine Distributors Willig Pharma Corporation yesterday, Two doses of Moderna Spike Vax vaccine elicit strong immune response for ages 6 to 11. Also, they said the safety and efficacy of the vaccine are similar to those in adults. The Philippine FDA approved Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccines for ages 5 to 11 and Sinovac for ages 6 and above. But Director Ho also said there is no approved COVID-19 booster shots for children yet in the Philippines. So far, it hasn't been approved yet um, by any of our um, experts. But actually, there's, a, there's pretty good data, especially for 12 to 17 years old, uh, that we probably should approve it very soon. Um, it's been it's being given as a booster uh, in the United States and other countries. Um, and I think the data is there. 
The DOH reminds parents to have their children receive immunization through the Chiquiting vaccination days set on June 30 to July 1. As of May 31, there are more than 750,000 children and infants who have been inoculated against vaccine-preventable diseases. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, or PhilHealth, will implement new contribution rates beginning tomorrow. A labor group, meanwhile, calls for transparency of funds. J.P. Nunez reports why. The Trade Union Congress of the Philippines, or TUCP, believes that the increase of contribution to fill health will benefit more Filipino citizens with their health insurance. TUCP spokesperson Alan Tanhusay said they are not opposing the contribution hike as it is mandated by law. However, to ensure proper usage of fund among its contributors and dependents, the labor group seeks transparency of funds from the state health insurer. Kina kailangan talaga ng ipakita ng federal officials na sila ay tapat, sila ay mapagkatiwalaan ng ng pera ng mga mga gawa. So yun po ang amin panawagan sa kanila na gamit nila na tama at gandahan pa ang serbisyo. PhilHealth contributors echoes the same sentiment. As a mandatory talaga ng gobyerno na magtaas siya para mas mataas pa yung maservisyuhan ng PhilHealth, okay na ako doon. Sana ngayon magawa na ng paraan nila na mailagay sa magandang paglalagyan yung pera ko na makalta sa akin. Starting tomorrow, PhilHealth will resume the implementation of the rate high contribution for premium package. PhilHealth clarifies that they are only implementing the provision under the Universal Health Care Law, which states a 0.5 increase in contribution annually. First of all, uh, ang gamit natin sa, sa premiums na ito is to pay for benefits. Uh, napakarami na ito benefits na uh, linapas, lalo na nung COVID times. Uh, ngayon, COVID pa rin ako tayo, but last year, umabot ng around 22 billion ang binayaran natin sa COVID benefits. Uh, meron pang mga ibang benefits na binayaran natin. So, lahat itong funds na ito, pumupunta sa benefits. Marami nakikinabang dito. The state health insurer will be collecting 4% of the monthly salary of its members, which will be paid by employees and the employer. Members who have a monthly wage of 10,000 pesos and below will be paying 400 pesos. Those with monthly salary of more than 10,000 pesos up to 79,999 pesos will be paying 400 pesos to 3,200 pesos. While those with monthly salary of 80,000 pesos and above will be paying 3,200 pesos. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Government agencies urge the House of Representatives to pass a bill institutionalizing the Economic Intel Group that was created last year by President Rodrigo Duterte. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Department of Trade and Industry, USEC, Ruth Castello explained to lawmakers during the House Committee on Agriculture meeting that smuggling sabotaged the plight of farmers, adding that smuggling will put consumers in a serious disadvantage as they are being blind to the source or the origin of smuggled products and possible health hazards. In connection with this, the DTI recommended to Congress to institutionalize the economic intel group if uh, you would please, um, maybe we can look into uh, continuing this subtask group, Mr. Chairperson, and institutionalizing it, providing funds for it, and providing personnel for it, because we have, um, we have a very clear objective and we have the passion also uh, to pursue uh, agricultural smugglers in the country. The interagency SAB task group on economic intelligence was tasked to go after profiteers, price manipulators, hoarders, and smugglers. 
The group, which consists of the DA in collaboration with the DTI and other related government agencies, was created last year by the approval of President Rodrigo Duterte. Meanwhile, the Department of Agriculture stressed that so much more could be done in the agricultural sector if an appropriate budgetary support would be allocated to the agency, which he claimed was neglected in the past years. In agriculture, we have reiterated how strapped our budget remains. Kokonti po, ang agrikultura ay napabayaan all these years, 30 years. To combat agri-product smuggling, the DA asked Congress for a budget for economic intelligence as well as police power to fight the proliferation of smuggling in the country. House Committee on Agriculture and Food Chair Mark Enverga requested the DTI and DA to submit to Congress their formal proposal and the necessary documents regarding personnel and budgetary requirements. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippine National Police, or PNP, is conducting a thorough investigation into the two explosions in Isabela City, Basilan, that wounded two individuals. Leia Ilagan reports. The Philippine National Police and Armed Forces of the Philippines believes that the Abu Siyap group are the perpetrators behind the twin explosions in Isabela City, Basilan. Isabella Basilan Chief of Police, Police Lieutenant Colonel Jun Picar Sitin said, There are still remnants of Abu Sayyap in the area who can do such an act. Sa kasalukuyan po, wala pa po mugma ko na grupo po. Pero alam naman po natin, itong Basilan po, may mga remnants po ng ESG po na mangilan-ngilan po. In a CCTV footage obtained by UNTV, a man wearing a yellow shirt and white cap alighted in his motorcycle. He left a plastic bag in the parking lot of the fast food chain. After a few seconds, it exploded. No one was hurt in the first explosion. The second explosion transpired in the Biel bus terminal in the area. Two individuals were injured in the incident. Kaya nung nakita ng conductor, dinala po itong uh, box na may sulat na po na, na, na kuhan, uh, tanduay ram. Na doon po nakapaloob yung tumabog. So nilagay pa nga nila ito po dito sa may uh, gulong na malaki kung saan meron may iyakuan yung seal ng DBL Transportation. At ilang segundo lang po, mula na ilagay ito ni Christopher Pasaol, yung security guard po sir, ay sumabog po ito. PNP Directorate per Operations Director, Police Major General Valdelion said, he will personally monitor the progress of the investigation of the two bombing incidents. De Leon also reminded all regional directors of police regional office and unit commanders to intensify their security measures to thwart similar attacks from occurring again. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, several COMELEC officials made several recommendations before a Senate panel on how to solve the persistent problem of vote buying in the country. Harleen Delgado has this story. Commission on Elections or COMELEC Commissioner George Garcia recommended before the Senate Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation to look into the Anti-Money Laundering Act in a bid to prevent vote buying. This as he revealed that the Anti-Money Laundering Council reported withdrawals of large sums of money in a local sur. He noted that in 2016, during the stint of former COMELEC chairperson Sixto Brillantes, a resolution was passed prohibiting the withdrawal of at least 500,000 pesos from banks. There was one report from the Anti-Money Laundering Council, Your Honor, on the too large amount of money withdrawn. It's in Ilocosur. And so... <laughs> Perhaps a uh, study That's in right. the Anti-Money Laundering Law. That's right. Uh, vote buying for purposes of, uh, of preventing uh, massive withdrawal or even prevention or suspension of any withdrawal from banks, Madam Chair, during the period at least 10 days before the election. Meanwhile, Kama Lecture person Say Damin Pangarungan wants stiffer penalties and speedy prosecution and conviction of vote buyers. 
For his part, Commissioner Ray Bulay wants to include in the proposed law the issuance of search warrant to allow police and election officers to enter private premises where an alleged vote buying incident happened. So far, Comelec's task force versus vote buying has received over 1,000 complaints from their Facebook page and official email. 105 were filed before the Comelec Law Department, while one was filed before the Integrated Bar of the Philippines in Quezon City. Meanwhile, Senator Aimee Marcos, who chairs the committee, wants penalty provisions for service providers over malfunctioning vote counting machines or VCMs. This as she laments that the commission can only withhold the payment or cancel the contract of the country's system provider for the automated election, Smartmatic. In fact, it should provide significantly and progressively steeper penalties depending on the uh, malfunction, the number, the seriousness. Pag sumobrang lumobo na yung nasisira, eh di syempre papagalitan mo ng todo. Eh, ang hirap naman na winibithold mo ng winibithold yung bayad, eh baka malintala pa yung uh, timing ng eleksyon. The Comelec says their law department can study the inclusion of penalty provisions in their contract with service providers. Garcia noted that 1,310 VCMs were replaced during the May 9 elections, stressing that there is a need to retire the 97,000 old VCMs. Marcos estimates that over 6.7 billion pesos is needed for the lease of 97,000 VCMs for the 2025 elections. Jorlin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. In other news, several transport groups call for government's aid for operators and drivers of public utility vehicles severely affected by oil price hike. However, they are optimistic that the next administration will provide resolution to this concern. Asher Kadapan Jr. explains why live. Uh, yes, Asher, good evening. Go ahead. Good evening. Well, the groups Manibela and Laban TNVS says they have not been losing hope. The challenges being encountered, particularly by the land tra or land transportation sectors, will come to an end. Manibela Chairman Mar Valbuena anticipates the incoming administration to come up with appropriate plans in resolving the issues that they emphasize are not only of their own, but also of the riding public who rely on the service they provide. Lagi po kaming umaasa. Hindi po kami nawawalan ng pag-asa na itong darating po na papasok na gobyerno. Kaya nga po yung panawagan natin ngayon pa lamang po pag-aralan na po itong mga problema na ito para pag-upo po nila. Sana may, may dala-dala na po kayong solusyon. Today, the said transport groups expressed their appeal to the government to answer the call of distress of drivers and operators of public utility vehicles. They explained that this sector were hardly hit by the series of price increase of petroleum products since the beginning of the year, barely leaving them with sustainable revenue. Mas malaki pa po yung buwis na naibibigay natin sa gobyerno kesa po doon sa na iuuwi namin sa aming pamilya. Mas malaki po yung kinikita ng mga, mga, ng mga gasoline station kesa po doon sa maghapon naming pamamasada. The groups also complain of non-receipt of the 6,500 peso fuel subsidy that the government has approved to be dispersed to affected transportation sectors. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board has yet to release any statement regarding the matter. Laban TNBS National President June De Leon, meanwhile, pushes the suspension of excise tax and value-added tax on petroleum products. Kung tatanggalin po at train law, 10 piso po, mahigit ang uh, mababawa sa presyo ng gasolina, ang ating VAT uh, sa gasolina na magkakalaga po ng 6 na piso. Kung tatanggalin po ito, Pansamantalang sususpindihin itong mga buwis na to, e eh mahigit labing anim na piso ang mababawas kada litro ng petrolyo. President-elect Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos, on the other hand, has earlier expressed favor of alternative solution in addressing the rising cost of fuel rather than suspension of oil taxes. Pero kung talagang makikita na may, may ano naman yan eh, pag sinabi mo, tanggalin natin yung excise tax o bawasan natin yung excise tax, ano yung magiging effect? Doon talaga bang worth it ba na 
mawala yung uh, pondo o yung income ng, ng, ng gobyerno uh, kasi mas magiging maganda naman ang effect sa ekonomiya and bawi, makabawi tayo. Well, the incoming administration is instead looking to support the transport sector as one of those hardly hit by the oil price hike. Will? Yes, uh, thank you. Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live from Quezon City. The Philippine Coast Guard will exhaust all available efforts for the search and rescue operations for the seven missing fishermen following the sea accident off Palawan. Dante Amento tells us why. The Philippine Coast Guard deployed another vessel to assist the continuing search and rescue operations for the seven fishermen who went missing off Maracanao Island in Agutaya, Palawan. This was after their boat collided with another vessel, MV Happy Hero, last Saturday. Kasama po natin ang mga rescue units ng Armed Forces of the Philippines. Uh, nagpadala na rin po tayo ng isang karagdagang barko, yung BRP Cape Boyador, para tumulong po sa ating mga current uh, rescue personnel sa area. Uh, dalakihan pa rin po natin yung ating search area at magpapatuloy po tayo hanggat hindi natin, hanggat kaya natin at hanggat uh, malocate natin yung mga nawawala pang itong fishermen. PCG spokesperson Commodore Armand Balilu says they have widened the area of the search and rescue efforts including coastal communities. Balilu added, there is no specific time yet when to terminate their operation. At i-assess nga kung anong sitwasyon doon sa area at magsagawa ng necessary recommendations. Kung sakaling sa tingin nila ay uh, wala na at uh, na-cover na yung area, eh, pwede namang mag-recommend ng termination pero wala pa naman pong nire-recommend sa atin. The PCG admits one of the challenges is the strong wind. Yung mismong paghahanap ay yun yung challenge sa atin. At uh, of course, alam mo naman na medyo humahangin na rin at yung mga yung alon. Pero ganun pa man, tuloy lang po ang ating search and rescue operation. Sana nga po, habang maganda pa yung panahon, ay uh, uh, ma makakita tayo ng development sa nawawalang mga fishermen. Meanwhile, Almaera Mata, daughter of Nelson Mata, one of the seven missing fishermen, calls those who might found her father to contact them immediately. Uh, sa lahat po ng makakakita kay Papa, sana po, kahit sa chat lang sir, sa post ko po sir, meron na The public may contact her through cell phone number 0951-0666-697. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has suddenly announced a nationwide recall for fresh organic strawberries in North America. Ia De Vera will tell us why live. Uh, yes, Ia, go ahead. Yes, William, two major brands of strawberries were recently linked to a hepatitis A outbreak in multiple states in the U.S. and Canada. The FDA is urging people to discard produce from Fresh Campo and HEB purchased between March and April after identifying that the strawberries are now past their shelf life. Businesses that distributed the product include Aldi, Walmart, Sprouts Farmers Market, and Trader Joe's. The recall was made after at least 17 people in the U.S. were infected and a further 12 were hospitalized. At the same time in Canada, 10 were infected and 4 were hospitalized. All were found to have purchased the said strawberries. Meanwhile, those who are unsure of what kind of strawberries they have at home were also urged to discard them. William? Yes, uh, Ia, is hepatitis A considered uh, contagious? William, hepatitis A is actually a highly contagious liver infection which can be easily spread through infected people and contaminated food or water. Symptoms include nausea, abdominal pain, fever, fatigue, and jaundice or yellowing of the skin. Vaccines for this infection are highly recommended. William? Yes, uh, thank you. Ia De Vera reporting live. 
After a two-month-long lockdown, Shanghai authorities will allow private cars, including taxis, back onto the roads and people to move freely in and out of low-risk housing compounds from midnight on Wednesday. In a statement on its official WeChat account, the Shanghai city government said that bus and rail transport will also resume basic operations from June 1, including a ferry that connects districts separated by the Huangpu River. People will be required to wear masks, discouraged from gathering, and encouraged to get vaccinated. Shanghai imposed a citywide lockdown on its 25 million residents on April 1 to combat the spread of COVID-19, enforcing harsh measures that caused widespread public anger over issues such as difficulties in accessing food and loss of income. European leaders have finally agreed to embargo more than two-thirds of Russian oil imports after being held up for a few weeks due to concerns over oil supplies. Ryuji Sasaki tells us why live. Uh, yes, sir, Ryuji, go ahead. William, EU leaders agreed to ban 90% of Russian oil imports by year-end to put an end to Moscow's war machine. The oil ban is one-fourth part of the sixth package of sanctions against Russia. In a meeting held in Brussels recently, EU Council President Charles Michel called the agreement a remarkable achievement, which needed the support of all 27 member countries and will be legally endorsed by Wednesday. Meanwhile, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban had made clear that he would support the new sanctions if their country or supply security was guaranteed. Leaders reached a compromise after Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky told the EU leaders in a video, ad in a video address to stop internal arguments. Нарешті мають припинитись будь-які чвари в Європі, внутрішні суперечки, які тільки заохочують Росію тиснути більше, більше, більше на вас, на всю Європу. Шостий санкційний пакет має бути узгоджений від Other European countries such as Slovakia, Czech Republic and Bulgaria are also worried over the impact of the oil ban on their economy. But President Zelensky said he, the oil sanction must be agreed on the effective so that Russia will be forced to start seeking peace. William? Yes, uh, thank you. Ryuji Sasaki reporting live. Meanwhile, the Department of Foreign Affairs vowed to provide $300,000 $300 financial aid rather and repatriation assistance for Filipinos based in Sri Lanka. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. Sri Lanka is facing the worst economic crisis since 1948. Filipinos in the country are facing challenges due to soaring commodity and fuel prices. Sri Lanka is also facing shortages in food, fuel, and medicine supplies while protests are still occurring in the streets. In order to alleviate the difficulties of Filipinos in Sri Lanka, the Department of Foreign Affairs is ready to provide assistance by giving $300 financial aid per Filipino in the country. The repatriation process is also underway for Filipinos who wish to return to the Philippines. Magpapadala tayo ng rapid response team mula po sa Dhaka, Bangladesh. At um, darating po sila sa June 2 at meron po din manggagaling dito sa um, DFK. Uh, na darating din sila this weekend para tulungan ng ating mga kababayan doon at kukunin ang listahan ng mga gustong umuwi. According to Department of Foreign Affairs Migrant Workers Affairs Under Secretary Sara Lu Ariola, there are 492 Filipinos in Sri Lanka. For the repatriation assistance, the DFA will also provide travel documents, especially for the children of Filipinos in Sri Lanka with no Philippine passports. Filipino parents will have to present their child's birth certificate. As of now, there are 25 Filipinos who are enlisted to be repatriated to the Philippines. The DFA said they are also coordinating with the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration and the Department of Social Welfare and Development to assist Filipinos after the repatriation. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God.
President Duterte honors all the Filipino medalists in the 31st Southeast Asian Games in Hanoi, Vietnam in a ceremony tonight at the Malacanang Palace. Attendees include hundreds of athletes, coaches and officials who helped the country finish fourth in the biennial meet following a 52 gold, 70 silver and 105 bronze medals. The government promised to provide due incentives to medalists, which is worth more than 30 million pesos. Under Republic Act No. 10699 or the National Athletes and Coaches Incentives and Benefits Act, an athlete should be rewarded by the government 300,000 pesos for every gold medal won, while 150,000 for every silver and 60,000 pesos for each bronze. Our Kasang Bahai, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through the social media accounts of Members Church of God International. And before we close, we will leave you with a word giving glory to God from the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 21. It says, The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. And those are the reasons behind the news, May 31, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am William Theo because we need to know. We will always ask why. We serve the people. We give glory to God.